This is the story of two sisters, Jessica Tate and Mary Campbell. Jessica lives in a neighborhood known as Rich. Jessica likes life. The only thing about life she would change, if she could, is that she would set it all to music. The Tates have more secrets than they do money. We're approaching Mary Campbell's house. Mary too likes life. Unfortunately, life doesn't seem to be too crazy about her. As you can see, the Campbells don't have nearly as much money as the Tates. They do, however, have as many secrets. In last week's episode of Soap, Jessica apologized to Corinne for having an affair with Peter. But Corinne refused to forgive her mother and moved out of the house and in with Peter, leaving Jessica sad and Chester mad. Bert received a telegram announcing the arrival of his other son, Chuck, and Chuck's little wooden doll, Bob, who Chuck believes is real. The Godfather gave Danny a key to a cabin in the woods where a gun is hidden in the fireplace and told him he must take Bert there within two days and kill him, or the mob will kill Danny. Confused? You won't be after this week's episode of Soap. Your father, Jessica. Where is he? Well, Chester, I, I, I don't. Benson, I... Benson, Benson, where is he? Wonderful, just wonderful. I killed myself in the kitchen all day, and then nobody eats. Benson, look at this. Not one plate touched. Well, let's not waste all this good food. Let's invite the Campbells over. They can throw it around. Benson. One of the reasons we're not eating is because we are all worried and upset about the Major's disappearance. And the Major would not have disappeared if you had been watching him. It ain't my job to watch him. The less I see of him, the better. Benson, when was the last time you saw him? I saw him this morning. He was running around in that camouflage outfit of his terrorizing the gardener. <laughs> then he left. Did he say where he was going, Benson? On patrol. <laughs> It means Grandpa's bonkers. <laughs> it means, Jessica, that he's gotten himself into one hell of a fix again. That's what it means. It means, Jessica, that in the course of 24 hours, your daughter has left home and your father has disappeared. It means, Jessica, that perhaps you are letting this household get the better of you. Oh, it's not her fault. She's not responsible for the answer. <laughs> you are sitting at the table. Good, Mr. T. <laughs> and this is standing, and this is leaving. <laughs> Jessica, do you remember the last time your father disappeared? Do you remember how he took the 812 commuter train into Manhattan and attacked the German consulate? <laughs> It caused an international incident, Jessica. I had to apologize to two governments. And remember on December 7th when he captured the entire staff of Benihana's of Tokyo? <laughs> Cost me a fortune to keep him out of the banana hats that time, Jessica. At ease, man. Oh, Daddy, there he is, Jessica. Where the devil have you been? Easy, Colonel. I think your anger will be assuaged when you see what I have brought you. There he is, one of the Nazis' oh. top spies. Oh, oh. God, it's Mr. Kirby. Oh, oh, dear. Are you crazy? This is Mr. Kirby, our neighbor. Don't let him fool you. He's a master of disguise. Uh, Kirby, I am I'm so sorry. Tate. How about a nice glass of iced tea, Mr. Kirby? I have had it, Tate. No, not a word. Don't say a word. There is nothing you can say to me, Tate. There is nothing you can say to a man who has spent an entire afternoon locked in the trunk of his car. Oh, what man was locked in the trunk of his car? It isn't, it isn't enough that I occasionally get shot at. No, today, today I get into my car and halfway down the street a gun was placed at the back of my head. I hid in the back seat. Some cold lemonade. I was then... 
I was then ordered to drive out to the city dump, where, where, where he proceeded to, to grill me for hours about troop movements on the Heifetz River. Yes. <laughs> I showed him my license, my, my credit cards even, to prove I was an American. I kept yelling out of the trunk of the car, cornflakes, McDonald's, Reggie Jackson, toilet paper. I even sang the Star Spangled Banner, but he wouldn't believe me. Of course, I didn't believe you. He couldn't tell me who played third base for the Yankees in 1931. <laughs> tell him, Colonel. <laughs> he doesn't know, you idiot. So that's it, Tate. I'm going on record right now. I swear if I ever catch that lunatic near me again, I'll have him put away. A diet soda! No. <laughs> Will you try and understand one more incident, and they are going to lock you up and put you away? Yes, Colonel. But once I'm on the inside, <laughs> I'll find out all their secrets, tunnel out and lead our boys to safety. <laughs> Good thinking, Colonel. It's thinking like that that's going to make you a general before this war is over. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, you, yeah, yeah, you. What is this, some national holiday I didn't hear about? Ah, I'm gonna start paying you guys about a piece. Maybe I get a little action around here. <laughs> Terrific. I asked the union for some high steel workers. They sent me steel workers who are high. For you hippies. <laughs> but... Danny? Danny? Hey, Danny! Hey, Danny! Danny, what a surprise! Hey, good to see you, fella. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Hard to find words, isn't it, huh? Is that some of you, huh? Look over there, Central Park. Over there, the World Trade Center. Down there, Fifth Avenue from 42 stories up. Huh? See those little ants down there? Those are buses. <laughs> <laughs> Birch! What? Birch, listen. This friend of mine has a cabin up in the Pocono. Hey, so you don't leave that riveting you... gun there, you jerk. What are you trying to do, kill somebody? I mean, last time somebody left something like that laying around, it fell. Knocked a hole in a guy's head the size of the Grand Canyon. Of course, the size of the hole in his head was relatively unimportant since he went crashing down 700 feet anyway. <laughs> you should have seen it then. What a mess. I mean, picture a watermelon. Oh, Bert! I'm sorry, here we go. Bert, look. This friend of mine has a cabin up in the Poconos. And, uh, I was wondering, uh, well, maybe, you, maybe you'd like to go up there fishing with me tomorrow, huh? huh? Hey. Danny, Danny, oh, Danny, 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 you climbed all the way up here to ask me to go fishing with you? Oh, Danny, 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 you make me so happy. Am I happy? Great. But I can't go. What? Hey, you with the ponytail, what you got an hour to have, you creep? I mean, Chuck's coming tonight from Hawaii. I mean, can't we make it Saturday? Or... No, 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 it, it's got to be tomorrow. Well, Danny, I'm sorry, man. I don't know how Look, can... Bert, tomorrow's the only day that my friend will be away. Danny, I don't know this. Hey, hey, you Pocahontas over here. Put down the binoculars. This is for welding here, not peeping. Bert, listen. You and me are going fishing tomorrow together, huh? In the Poconos. You and me fishing together tomorrow. Got it? Oh, God, I'm being such an idiot. For the first time, my stepson asks me to do something with him, and here am I trying to find reasons why I can't. Hey, Danny, well, we're going fishing, and we're going tomorrow, huh? I mean, after all, I haven't seen Chuck in 15 years. If I don't see him for one day, it's not going to kill me, is it? <laughs> hey, what are, you, are you crazy up here? Indy wrestling up here? <laughs> Eleven, sixteen, twenty-one. Carry the two. <laughs> I cannot afford all this, Claire. You are spending a fortune. Chester, you didn't answer my question. I asked you if you talked to Jessica. Well, of course I talk to Jessica. Every night when I go home, I talk to Jessica. <laughs> What's the matter with you, Claire? Do I talk to Jessica? <laughs> Did you tell Jessica that you're leaving her, Chester? What is this? $2,000 for wallpaper for your apartment? Yes, Chester. What are you papering the walls in, Claire? Currency? <laughs> you know, Chester, there is a solution to all this. If you leave Jessica and move in with me, I'll be happier. And when I'm happier, I don't spend as much money. Well, I'm sorry, Claire. You'll just have to wait. Wait? That's right. Wait. Remember 10 years ago, Chester? 
Remember when you said you couldn't leave because little Billy had a perception problem and if you left then he might write backwards for the rest of his life? <laughs> so I waited. And then that cleared up and Billy could read, but suddenly Eunice wouldn't get out of her bathrobe or leave her room and you couldn't leave then. So I waited. And then as soon as Eunice got dressed, Corinne stopped eating and had to be hospitalized and you couldn't leave until she was keeping solids down. And so I waited. Well, now Billy reads, Eunice gets dressed, Corinne eats, and I'm still waiting. Well, that's it for waiting, Chester. You are going to leave Jessica now. You are going to go home and tell her that you're leaving. And if you don't, Chester, I will. <laughs> fine, go. I'll do it, Chester, I swear. Oh, fine, fine. Do you need directions to the house? <laughs> I know where you live, Chester. Good. <laughs> well, goodbye, Claire. Say hello to Jessica for me. <laughs> <laughs> Go to my house and tell Jessica. <laughs> Never try to bluff a bluffer. <laughs> I'm so excited I can hardly contain myself. After 15 years, I'm going to be with my son. Another son. Two sons in two weeks, that's a son a week. I don't know. Oh, Mary, 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 I'm so excited. I haven't taken a good breath all day. It's just excitement because my son is coming out of that or a heart attack. <laughs> yes. Oh, and you guys, you guys are gonna love him. I can't wait, Bert. I mean, I've always wanted to meet a Hawaiian ventriloquist. Well, now you will. One of the best. He played all the big rooms on the island. <laughs> that's it, that's it, that's it. Come on, up, he's here. Get off. Here you go. Hello, hello. We're here to start the show. I'm Chuck and Don. Hello, hello, hello. Let's go, let's go, let's go. I'll sing and dance. He'll dance and sing. Wherever we go, whatever we do, we're gonna go through it together. Yeah. <laughs> Did you see it? Isn't he great? Uh, Chuck, I'd like to meet my wife, Mary, and her two boys, it's Danny and Jody. Hi. Okay, I don't need this. I'm leaving. Well, he didn't see you. I love that. I didn't fly 6,000 miles to be stissed. Is that cute? <laughs> I really don't need this aggravation from the lower middle class. Hey! Oh. Dad, could you say hi to him? I think his feelings are hurt. <laughs> Sure. Hey, Bob, nice to see you again. Did you ever say anything like that? No, apologize. Apologize? Well, for ignoring him. Hey, I'm sorry. I... <laughs> hey, Bob, come on, Bob. I'm sorry for ignoring you like that. It's just that I'm so happy to see Chuck here, you know? Uh, would you like a drink? Uh, no, thanks. Okay, then I'll have one. <laughs> Did anyone else notice I wasn't introduced to the rest of the family? What is it? My skin's different? I'm not good enough? Oh, of course you are. Hi, Bob. I'm Mary. Hi, Mary. And this is Danny. How are you? Hi, Dan. And that's Jody. Hello, Jody. Hi. <laughs> and you get uncomfortable around homosexuals, huh? Have an hors d'oeuvre. I don't eat meat. Yeah, I gotta love it here. You know, this is terrific. How do you make it work? No, it's illegal! Take it easy, take it easy. Take it easy? Well, did he look under your clothes, huh? Did I look under her skirt? <laughs> Bob's a little upset. He hates to travel. Drop dead. <laughs> Got a little plane sick. What did he do? Throw up sawdust? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, fine. Now the sissy's starting in. Hey, my brother is not a sissy. He's a... <laughs> Bob! Bob! Bob, are you okay? Danny hurt me. What is it, Bob? My head is stuck. It's 
stuck. I know that! Help me! <laughs> it's moving. Not that way! Hey, is he okay? He's fine. <laughs> Knock on wood. Up your kazoo, butterfly! Hey, uh, uh, listen, uh, we'd like to freshen up a little bit before dinner. Yeah, I'd like that. Oh, well, good. You can just go right upstairs, and uh, I'll bring up your stuff in a minute or so. Huh? You, you can take a shower. All Bob needs is a little lemon pledge. <laughs> I love Anita Bryant. <laughs> I love your family. Oh, this is great. You saw they're just less in stutters. The dame just sits. One guy's a throat, and the other guy's gonna like you slightly higher than kilt. I love you. <laughs> Ah, uh, they had a long trip. I'm sure after they get washed up and rested, my Bob will be in a much better mood. Bert. He's a dummy. I heard it! Believe me, Mrs. Tate, I didn't want to be the one to have to tell you this, but Chester just hasn't given me any choice. I'm sorry. <laughs> Who's here? Glad to see you, Mr. Tate. Nice to have you home early. Let me take that from you. All right, Benson, you're being too nice. What's going on? It's a surprise. <laughs> Let me fix you a drink. Benson, how many times do I have to tell you I am on a diet? I don't want a drink. You're gonna want this. <laughs> I said no. Where is Mrs. Tate? In the dining room. Why don't you... Pop in and say hello. <laughs> hello, Chester. I was just leaving. Well, nice seeing you, Mrs. Tate. I'm sorry I couldn't have been under more pleasant circumstances. Uh, Jessica? Chester, I... I know. I, I... Horrified. Speechless. I'm speechless, Chester, and anguished. I know, I know. I'm, uh, anguished and, uh, and speechless. Uh, I, uh, wish there were something I could say. Well, there's nothing to... to say, Chester. Oh, well, of course. I mean, of course, words can't express the, uh, the sorrow. The tragedy. Tragedy? Mm. Well, maybe tragedy. <laughs> I guess tragedy. And horror. Oh, horror, yes. The horror to... <laughs> I'm sorry, Jess. I... From the bottom of my heart, I'm sorry you had to hear. Please don't apologize, Chester. Oh, well, I know it's just words. You I... must promise me one thing, Chester. I'll get rid of her, Jess. You must promise me not to fire her. Absolutely. <laughs> what? Well, Chester, I mean, that girl is sick. She is so far gone already that a something like that might just push her right over the edge. <laughs> yes, I, uh, I, I see what you mean. Yes. Poor, poor sad girl. I mean, Chester, to be so much in love with you that she's convinced herself that you feel the same way. <laughs> and, Chester, that's not all. I mean, to believe, and believe me, Chester, I mean, she really does believe it, that, that you're actually having an affair with her. <laughs> The mind, Jess. The tricks the mind plays. Poor thing. Yes. <laughs> well, Chester, you know, under the circumstances, I mean, it's not really her fault. I mean, what woman in the world wouldn't fall in love with you, Chester? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Now, I'm going to go upstairs and draw a nice hot bath, hmm? So you can have a good, long, relaxing soak before dinner. 
Okay. <laughs> Benson, why are you standing there with that martini? I told you I was on a diet. Mr. Taint, I have seen dumb luck in my time. <laughs> I have seen a guy fill an inside straight flush to beat four races. I have seen a guy hit the daily double for two solid weeks straight. But I have never, at no time, seen nothing like this. <laughs> the look on your face. Yeah, well, I thought it was a snake. A snake with leaves? <laughs> hey, uh, Danny, I'm so happy. Yeah, me too. I mean, to have a real buddy. I mean, you know, I, I've always been kind of alone. I don't have a lot of friends, so to have a buddy who lives in the same house, and now Peter's here, and Chuck and Bob are here. Well, I guess it's not fair to count Bob, you know, he's a, you know, one of those. <laughs> uh, Danny, what are you doing? Don't clean. I got to. This place is a mess. Leave it, leave it, leave it. Your mother's not here. We can feel free to be slobs. Oh, your mother. Oh, is she happy. Did you see her face when we left this morning? She was there with those great, big, glistening eyes and that little smile of hers. You know, the one when she doesn't open her lips? Mm. That's her most very, very, very pleased smile. The big smile is her moderately pleased smile. The little smile, when she doesn't smile at all, that is, oddly enough, her most happy smile. And that was a smile she was smiling in the morning. Danny, what are you doing? Let's go out on the lake. I gotta get this stuff out of the way. Why? Well, uh, well, how are we gonna cook fish if we can't get to the fireplace? On the stove. Oh, fish you buy in the store, you cook on the stove. Fish you catch, cook in the fireplace. There's nothing here. Yeah, well, I mean ashes, but Danny, that's normal for a fireplace. You're a funny guy. Funny guy. Come on, Danny, let's go out on the lake, see how they're hitting. Tonight, we get a fish fry for ch Chuck. Uh, Danny? Uh, d uh Danny, uh, where are you, Danny? I'm, I'm up here. Danny, uh, what are you doing up the chimney? I'm cleaning out the flue. Cleaning out the flue? It's a funny guy. He walks into a cabin, goes right up the chimney, cleans out a flue. <laughs> uh, that could be a safety precaution. No, no, no. Hey, don't touch that! What is it? Nothing. Just oh. leave it alone. Why? Oh, it just fell down the chimney. I know it fell. Yeah, Give what's it what's in it? Nothing. I need it, though. Give it to me, Bart. I found it. All right. All right, all right. <laughs> Looks at this place, it's probably garbage. It's funny, you know, you think you know somebody. At home, your room's a mess. You throw food all over the kitchen. We go away for a weekend. You turn out to be Louis Pasteur. <laughs> hey, Ben, you're full of surprises. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Danny, uh, that's a gun. Put it down. It's dangerous. Uh, Danny, what are you doing? You, uh, you're pointing a gun at me. I'm gonna kill you, Bert. <laughs> Will Claire come up with a new plan to force Chester into leaving Jessica? Will Chester leave Jessica? If he does, will Jessica know it? Will the Major continue fighting World War II single-handedly? Will Bob, the wooden doll, relax and enjoy his stay with the Campbells? Or will he continue to act warped? Now that Danny has the gun in his hand, will he pull the trigger and kill Bert? And if he does, will Bert finally stop laughing and take him seriously? These questions and many others will be answered on next week's episode of Soap. This is the story of two sisters, Jessica Tate and Mary Campbell. Jessica lives in a neighborhood known as Rich. Jessica likes life. The only thing about life she would change, if she could, is that she would set it all to music. The Tates have more secrets than they do money. We're approaching Mary Campbell's house. Mary, too, likes life. Unfortunately, life doesn't seem to be too crazy about her. As you can see, the Campbells don't have nearly as much money as the Tates. They do, however, have as many secrets. In last week's episode of Soap, another of Bert's sons, Chuck, and Bob, his wooden doll, arrived from Hawaii. 
Much to their horror, the Campbells discovered that Chuck believes Bob is really real. Although he really isn't real, he is real obnoxious. Claire told Chester she was going to tell Jessica everything, but Chester didn't believe her. Much to Chester's surprise, Claire did tell Jessica everything. Only Jessica didn't believe her. Or did she? Following the Godfather's orders, Danny invited Bert to a cabin in the woods in order to kill him. Bert thought he was going in order to fish. Imagine his surprise when he found a pistol pointed at his head. Confused? You won't be after this week's episode of Soap. We begin this week's episode of Soap, where we left off with Danny about to kill Bert. You're going to kill me? <laughs> uh, you're joking, right? I mean, hey, I mean, of course you're joking. Oh, what? No? You mean you're actually going to kill me? Uh, I'm going to have a lot of trouble believing this, but, um, um, Danny, uh, now listen, Danny, if, uh, if, if uh, you're really going to kill me, could you at least tell me why? You killed my father. That could do it. <laughs> well, that explains the gun now, and now the gun makes sense. To tell you the truth, I'm relieved. Yeah, really, you know what it's like trying to keep a secret like this? And the guilt, the nightmares? I have to do it, Bert. Hey. <laughs> no, I want you to know that I have to do this. I don't really want to, no matter what you did, but I have to, otherwise they'll kill me. Hey, Danny, it's okay. Don't worry. I mean, I mean, I mean, what kind of a choice is that? You or me? Naturally, you're gonna pick me. I mean, don't feel bad about it. Well, I just wanted you to know. So, are we gonna do this now, or wait a while, or what? <laughs> Let's do it now. I want to get it over with. This and a dentist are two things I don't like thinking about for too long. <laughs> uh, wait, uh, Danny. Do you mind if I sit? No. Good, I think I'd like to sit down. That way I won't have so far to fall. Uh, Danny, if I'm sitting down, you have to lower the gun, otherwise you're gonna hit the wall. This is very hard for me, Bert. What, do you think it's easy for me? No, but I have to pull the trigger. Hey, I'm the one that's getting shot here. I know, but I'm gonna have to live with it. Hey, but I'll be dead. <laughs> Danny, you ever shoot before? No. Oh, too bad. Okay, don't worry now. Just line me up on the site. That's a little bump on the end there. Just... <laughs> Bye, Danny. Bye, Bert. Give me the gun, I'll shoot myself. What can you do with a gun? Danny, Danny, if you don't do it, they're gonna kill you. Now, come on, shoot the kill. Eh? No! Danny, listen to me. If they kill you, <laughs> your mother's never gonna survive it. You're her little boy. I'm just her husband. I mean, her first husband got killed. She's used to it. No! Danny, Danny, okay. All right, now. Don't panic. Now, come on, we'll, we'll make believe it. We'll make believe it's a game, okay? We'll make believe that we're in a shooting gallery and I'm one of those bears, okay? And I'll move around like the bear does, okay? Good job. Forget it, Bert. Come on. No way in the world am I gonna shoot you. Danny, if they want me dead, they're gonna kill me. At least do it and get credit for it. They don't care about you dead. They need something on me. I'm gonna have to hide out. All right, now, you're gonna need money. I'll give you some, I got some saved. No. Uh, yes. I'm not taking your money, Bert. Uh, Danny, we're not discussing it. Yes, you are. No way. Hey, Danny, give me a break. If they take my money, you'll kill me, one or the other. Okay, okay. I'll take some money. Good. Well, I don't know what I'm gonna tell Ma. I can't tell her the truth. No, no, she'd be worried sick, plus which, once she knows the whole story, she's not going to be too thrilled with me either. A murderer. Don't worry. I'd never tell her. The Godfather told me the whole thing. I, I know why you did it. Thanks, Danny. Come on, let's go. On the way home, we'll make up a story to tell your mother. Oh, now, Danny, if they're out there and they see us walk out together, they're going to figure out you didn't do it. And they're going to kill both of us, so let me go first. None of us suspect anything. 
Understand if it's a doll and it's his doll, how can he think it's real? He does, I swear. It's got its own bed. I had to serve it dinner. Last night I had to make fish because it doesn't eat meat. Why doesn't it eat meat? Jessica, it doesn't eat. Oh. And the fighting that's always going on. Chuck and the dummy are always arguing. Well, Mary, I mean, that is ridiculous. I mean, if he's gonna have a doll, he should have one he gets along with. <laughs> huh? Here they come. Listen to me, they. I'm getting as crazy as everyone else. <laughs> Morning. Morning. Chuck, I'd like you to meet my sister, Jessica Tate. Jesse, this is Chuck Campbell. Hi. Hello. And Bob. <laughs> What do you do? Hello, Bob. Big ones. <laughs> hey, Cookie, you forgot something? I'm dying to see how he eats it. <laughs> oh, God, I really need this. I really need eggs like rocks this morning. Hey, sweetheart, it's about these little yellow boulders on my plate here. Uh, Mary, Bob's eggs are, are too hard. He really wanted over easy. Now, listen, Chuck. Enough is enough. I am not making any more eggs, and that's final. That I make eggs in the first place for a dumb dog that doesn't eat is crazy. So if you expect me to make them again, forget it. Okay, that's it. Call United Airlines. Oh, the first flight out of here. Just calm down, Bob. This is my family. Of course. I was going to explain you. Now, let's go. Oh, enough. Enough. Stop it. Stop it, she says. Who do you think started this pussycat? You and your rotten eggs. You know, Mary, he's right. In fact, you've been creating tension between us ever since we got here. Can't you stand to see two people getting along? I have not. That is not true. That... I don't believe this. I'm defending myself to a dummy. Uh, uh, Mary, if, if please, I may say something. I was here and I heard you. Uh, you did refuse to serve him. Jesse. <laughs> Come on in. Hey, what are you doing? I gotta go away for a while. Where? A little trip. You're in trouble. I'm not in trouble. It's a business trip. Hey, come on, Danny. I know what business you're in. We'll get a lawyer. We'll go to the police. If we go to the police, I'll be in jail when they kill me. If we get a lawyer, I'll be broke when they kill me. Forget <laughs> it. I gotta go. <laughs> Danny, I think there's something we should talk about before you go. How do you fold a jacket? Right. Danny, when you come back, you might have a sister. What are you talking about? A few days I check into the hospital for the sex change operation. Oh, come on, Jody. I'm in no mood for jokes now. I'm serious. Come on, knock it off, will you? Danny, it's no joke. I'm gay. <laughs> you never quit, do you? Hey, face. Face facts, will you, Danny? I'm a homosexual. It's the truth. I'm gay. Hand me those pants. Danny, don't make this difficult for me. I mean, what you're doing is saying that you can't accept me if I'm gay. You're not gay. I am. That's ridiculous. How can you be gay? I mean, we're brothers, and I'm not gay, so you're not gay. Anyway, you're too good in sports. Danny, that has nothing to do with it. You're not gay. Danny, have you ever seen me out with a girl? Hmm? Have you? You're not gay. You're shy. That's it. You're shy. Now, hand me those shirts. Danny, You we... are not gay. You are not gay. I don't want you to be gay, and you're not, so shut up and hand me those shirts. <laughs> why? I don't know why. I just am. Well, maybe you're not. I mean, how can you be sure? I'm in love with Dennis Phillips, the quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> Is that it? Is that the proof? For God's sakes, Jody, I'm crazy about Joe Namath. I, I idolize Mean Joe Green. I'd give anything We're to We're lovers, me. Danny. 
Dennis Phillips is gay? <laughs> Boy, this is a lot for one day. Danny, what's the big deal, huh? I mean, now that you know, am I any different? We're not friends anymore? You don't look gay. I'm still me. Hey, I'm still the Jody who plays tennis with you. I'm still the Jody who bowls with you. I'm still the Jody who laughs with you. And I'm still the Jody who counts on you. You're probably not gay. I am. <laughs> and it shouldn't make any difference. And if it does and you don't love me now because of it, then you've never loved me at all. Jody. Look, all these years, I, I didn't want to hear it. I didn't want to listen to you. I was afraid if I ever heard it, I, I couldn't look at you again. Well, can you? <clears throat> yeah. Friends? Are you kidding? No, we still friends. Not only are you gay, you're a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, big brother. <laughs> you're okay, little brother. Hey, you know, now that I look, you do walk kind of funny. <laughs> Come on, Don, won't you just sit down there, Chuck? Over there. What is it, Bert? Well, now, I asked you all down here because Danny has some really great news, and he told me first. Isn't that something? Be <laughs> pipe down. I really needed to be dragged down here in the middle of the night. What's the news, Bert? Well, now, uh, now we all know that Danny's been involved in some very dangerous activity with some very dangerous people, but he's getting out of all that. Not that what he's getting into isn't dangerous, but the people he's getting into it with aren't. Nice people, nice bunch of people. So what we're getting rid of here is a rotten bunch of people and keeping a little of the danger. And after all, what is a little dangerous? I mean, crossing the streets a little dangerous, eating eggs is a little dangerous. Exactly. What sort of dangerous work does this nice bunch of people do? Spying, Ma. What? Spy. I'm going to be a spy. <laughs> A spy? Right. <laughs> Quiet. What are you, crazy? Who becomes a spy? What kind of a job is spying? Well, you see, uh, I was selected. Selected? Yeah, I was selected by... Uh, uh, by... Uh... By... Uh... Computer, Mom. The government's doing all these things by computer these days. Right. See? Very nice. You'll run around in a trench coat getting shot at. I love it. Ma. And Mrs. Baum down the street thought she had a good one when her daughter became a hooker. Nothing. Ma, please. Try and understand. I don't want to leave you like this, but I gotta go. You're leaving now? Mary, there's just so much spying you can do in the living room. <laughs> when will I see you again? Do you spy weekends? When will you ever come home? I'll come home whenever I can. I have to be in disguise, though. In disguise? Right. Wonderful. I'll be the only mother who gets visits from her son and doesn't know it. David? Come. Bye, big brother. Bye, little brother. Take care of yourself. Bye, Bert. Bye, Chuck. Bye, Danny. Bye, Bob. Be nice. Bye, Dan. Can I have your room? <laughs> Ma? I can't. Ma, please. I'm not ready for this. I mean, it was only yesterday I was changing your diapers. I swear. Yesterday I fed you strained beets for the first time and you spit them out at me. <laughs> now you're leaving and I, I don't know where you're going or what will happen to you. Yesterday you were spitting up, today you're spying. <laughs> it's hard to make the adjustment. 
I'll come home, Ma. I promise. As often as I can. You take care of yourself? I will. Do remember to eat. Listen to this. I'm telling a spy to eat regular meals. I'll eat, Ma. I promise. Goodbye. Wait. I love you. You're still my baby. Just, no matter how old you are, you're still my little boy. When you're 80 years old and putting your teeth in a glass, you'll still be my little boy. I know. I guess I have to say goodbye now. Could I say goodnight instead? It's easier. Good night, Ma. Good night, Daddy. Goodbye. No, sir. No, sirree. I have served food to people who don't eat it. I have served food to people who throw it. But no way am I going to serve food to a dummy. But Benson, he's a guest. Forget it. Jessica, Benson has been with us for I don't know how many years. And I have never agreed with him. Now, though it pains me to say this, he's absolutely right. I, for one, am going out to dinner. I'll join you. All right, Benson. <laughs> I feel like chinks. You want to eat chinks? <laughs> Chinese food would be fine, Benson. Oh, I know just the place. Billy, would you like to come to the chinks with Benson and me? Are you kidding? I missed this? Yeah, a dinner party for a dummy. Really, Jessica? Well, Chester, I... I... It's all right, Benson. I'll get it. Hello. Oh, no. Come in, come in. Well, my goodness, where are Chuck and Bob? Tell them, Bert. <coughs> what? They're coming. Didn't they come with you? Yeah, well, sure, of course, kind of. Tell them what happened, Bert. It's no big deal. They had a little fight. <laughs> and made us stop the car so they could continue in private. <laughs> Your son and his dummy are fighting? Yeah. <laughs> Tell them what they were fighting about, Bert. Come on. No, tell them, Bert. Billing. <laughs> what? Billing, you know, I mean, the act is called Chuck and Bob, and Bob feels that since he's the main attraction, his name should come first. I don't believe this. <laughs> well, I don't know. I can see his point. <laughs> I'm sure. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Please accept my apologies, though we had to settle a little something outside. Oh, that's all right. I'm just so glad you could come. Now, come right in here and meet everyone. You'll have to get my partner. He's not talking. <laughs> Cute, isn't it? <laughs> Did I exaggerate? Chester, come here, dear. Come here, Chester. This is my husband. Chester, this is Chuck, and this is Bob. That's him? <laughs> you got to be kidding. That guy's 80 if he's a day. <laughs> He's got plenty of money, because that's probably all you're getting from him. <laughs> Jessica. Huh? <laughs> well, uh, let's all have a drink. Come on now, let's go to the bar and have a drink. Come on. You better open your mouth and say something, Creighton, or I'm leaving. Okay, all right, all right. It stays Chuck and Bob. Chuck and Bob. You happy now, Creighton, huh? Well, let's get over to the damn bar. I'm gonna need a drink to get through this evening. <laughs> Excuse me, Granddad. <laughs> uh, scotch and soda neat. Hey, Sandal, the noon whistle did not blow. I said scotch. <laughs> One more word, and he goes into the fireplace. I'll get it, Benson. Yes? Telegram for Mary Campbell. Oh, I'll take it. I've got to hand deliver this. Oh, Mary, come in. Oh, oh. Hey, 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 fella, hey, back off. 
off easy. Uh, uh, it's Danny. It's Danny. Oh, Danny. In disguise. I just wanted to say hello. <laughs> I'm afraid I can't stay. Is this one of your spying disguises? Yes, Aunt Jessica. Oh, Danny, it's wonderful. Nobody in the world would recognize you. <laughs> well, I gotta go now. Oh. I'll come again soon. All right. All right? Danny. Bye, Goodbye, Danny. everyone. Bye, bye. Get on, everyone. Well, Jessica, the Campbells come over for a little Tuesday night shootout. This is the last night they come to dinner. Shh, Chester. I didn't hit. I didn't hit. Oh, my God. I mean, somebody, he's been hit. Uh, Chester, do something quick. Call an ambulance, Chester. Dad, you're calling an ambulance for a dummy? It's a dummy, Dad. You'll get the Purple Heart, soldier. <laughs> My God, they're trying to kill Danny. It's okay, Mom. He got away. Mary, don't worry. He's fine, darling. Don't die. I'll, I'll do anything. I'll... I'll make it Bob and Chuck. Bob and Chuck? <laughs> yes. Got a nice ring to it. Okay, what are we all standing around here with our thumbs up our noses, huh? We're gonna eat or not. But, but your wound. Just a nick, a little plastic wood, and I'll be okay, yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad you're all right. Jessica, hmm? he's a doll. I knew you'd like him, Chester. <laughs> Come on, everybody, let's go to dinner. Come on, honey. All well, it ends well. God. <laughs> I don't know how much more of this I can take. I know we all have our crosses to bear. This is ridiculous. Will Mary find out that Danny is running for his life from the mob? Or will she continue to believe that he's a spy? Will Mary ever make eggs the way Bob likes them? Or will the dummy have to go to a coffee shop for breakfast? Will Jody really become Danny's sister? Will Danny, now that he has to run from the mob, live to see it? These questions and many others will be answered on next week's episode of Soap.